system engineering this is the topic uh, we are going to cover in this particular video if i remove ing from engineering it becomes engineer and the term that we get is system engineer now a systems engineer is typically uh, a designation is somebody who works in information technology domain he or she is also known as a software engineer or a senior software or a software systems engineer the role of a systems engineer or a software engineer is to write programs write uh, code which can eventually be tested and uh, you know uh, it can be used by people for product development or for any other purpose a systems engineer also performs high level root cause analysis a good example would be let's say there's a power outage a broadband outage during monsoon season and people are not able to use the broadband typically that's where a systems engineer could probably help for service interruptions and help bring services back online because of the expertise that he or she has what is systems engineering let's uh, understand it through a short video All right, so I hope uh, this gave uh, at least some idea about what systems engineering is about. Let's move forward. Systems engineering focuses on how to design and manage 
especially complex systems. The educational background for a systems engineer is typically a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in computer science, in information technology, in any of the engineering disciplines. Could it be electrical engineering or uh, mechanical engineering? Like systems engineers, software engineers also use programming languages to develop software. They collaborate with stakeholders. I'm talking about both internal stakeholders like uh, employees who are either business analysts, uh, database administrators, designers, architects, and so on, test engineers, and also with the external stakeholders, which could be the client. The, let's focus on software development because uh, this is what we're learning as uh, management information systems, systems engineering. This topic is part of MIS, so let's focus on software development. Well, what are some of the issues in software development? Let's find out requirements. When requirements are gathered at the beginning of the project, uh, it could change rapidly. It could be incomplete. It could be inaccurate. There could be so many issues related to requirements. There could be issues related to design. And uh, by design, I'm talking about both logical design and physical design. Wherein logical design, we are talking about inputs and outputs, uh, data flows, you're using diagram, uh, data flow diagram or any pictorial representation. And when you talk about physical design, I'm talking about storage or hardware, software development, the language used, programming language used to write efficient code. Then it needs to be tested and there are different types of testing techniques. One could use functional testing, system testing, performance testing, automation testing to name a few. And that is where the coordination of different teams, business analysts, developers, test engineers, DBAs are really required. Then you need to maintain this is the last stage wherein you need to maintain the software. And it could actually become difficult when, when you're dealing with uh, complex projects. Once the software is shipped, once it's ready to be used, there has to be, a, uh, um, there has to be some training that needs to be provided on how to use the software. All right, software development process. The software development methodology is splitting of software into distinct phases. It contains activities with the intent of better planning and management. It is also known as, there are different terms used for software development process. It's the same as system development methodology, SDLC, which is nothing but uh, software development life cycle, software development process. The methodology includes deliverables that are created by a project team and by deliverables I'm talking about for a business analyst, the deliverable is use cases or business requirements document. For a developer, it is code. For uh, a test engineer, test plans, test cases. The common methodologies included in software development process are quite a few. One is the ancient, uh, the, the old age, the age old or old age uh, waterfall model. The agile, agile software development methodology, there is extreme programming, iterative model, there's a spiral model. For the purpose of discussion, we will be focusing only on waterfall model and spiral model based on the syllabus, uh, extreme programming. Now, these are the phases in waterfall model. It starts with requirements phase, then you move on to design, then you move on to implementation, which is nothing but development and then you you know do the verification and validation you're testing the software and then comes maintenance so unless one uh, phase gets over you can't move into the into the next phase that is what waterfall model is about so yeah waterfall model it's a sequential design process as i just explained used in software development process progress is seen as flowing steadily downwards like a waterfall as we just saw in the diagram Unless one phase gets over, you cannot move on to the uh, next phase. And waterfall model is uh, typically used when the project is not so complex, when the project is small. Waterfall model mandates that requirements are well documented because it all starts with requirements. You have to ensure that requirements are correctly gathered. It is clear mm. so that uh, the software developers and test engineers can write program, can test it based on the requirements. 
the PM, which is the project manager, the project manager is likely to spend more time during the requirements phase than any other phase in software in, in, in the waterfall model. Well, it's a small exercise that you can do it at home or uh, during your break. Now that you know what, what waterfall model is, think of the advantages it has and also the disadvantages. So what is the advantages? What are the advantages and disadvantages of waterfall model? Now let's move on to another model, spiral model. Let's take a look. It's a combination of both waterfall and iterative model. Every phase in spiral model, and I believe there are four, we'll take a look later. Each phase in spiral model begins with a design goal and it also ends with the client reviewing the progress and then giving the feedback at what needs to be done. The development team, the software development team in Spiral model also starts with a small set of requirements as, uh, as was the case with waterfall model. The requirements are looked at, business requirements documents are written, functional requirements are written. The software engineering team then adds functionality for all the new requirements that gets added, that new, that gets added, updated uh, as with every increasing spiral. That is how the term spiral model until the application is actually ready to be deployed to production. The spiral model, yes, it has four phases. As I said, the first phase is the planning phase. You plan for your resources, you plan for your cost, what's going to be the budget for the project, what about the schedule, when is, uh, how much time would each phase take, how much time would the entire uh, project take, uh, uh, would take to complete. By resources, we are not just talking about human resources, we are also talking about software resources, hardware resources as well. So that all happens in planning and this actually helps for every uh, iteration. Understanding the systems requirements, understanding the functional requirements, performance requirements for continuous communication with all the stakeholders that happens in the planning phase. And yes, as described some time back between all the stakeholders who are involved with that particular project. Then comes risk analysis. This is the second phase. What are we talking here? We're talking about identifying that our put potential risks. What are some of the risks and what can we do to mitigate those risks moving forward? The third phase is engineering, wherein we are talking about software development testing. So coding takes place and when coding happens, uh, you know, the software test engineers now they, they test the software, they report defects, which gets fixed by the software developers, the, de the test engineers would again test it. So this cycle continues till you know, there aren't too many defects uh, and then the software gets deployed at the customer side. Uh, and the term used here is beta testing. So beta testing is something that is done at the customer side by the real or the end users of the software and then they provide feedback based on the software that is developed. Evaluation is the next and the last phase. And what are we evaluating? We are talking about customer feedback. Uh, what does the customer think about the software? We are also talking about evaluating, uh, you know, and identifying, sorry, identifying and monitoring risk in terms of schedule. Or did the schedule slip? The schedule slippages, are we going to go over the budget in terms of cost? And that's what cost is about. Why is spiral methodology used? Uh, now in waterfall model, it's typically used for smaller projects when the duration is small, the size is small. When it comes to spiral methodology, it's exactly the opposite. When the projects are supposed to be large and complex, when there are frequent releases, as soon as one, you know, that I've got releases, frequent releases in terms of what is ready to be deployed, uh, spiral methodology is preferred. And this is also used when you're actually evaluating what are the potential risks uh, you know, in terms of schedule, in terms of cost, because that's extremely important. The requirements are not clear. And changes can happen at any time. You might start working and then suddenly there's a certain change that we need to probably uh, either undo whatever we did. So changes can happen, can happen at any point of time. And that's pretty much it. 
about systems engineering, waterfall model and spiral model. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you.